In this video I'm going to demonstrate the automatic lip syncing in Cartoon Animator 5 and how you can manually adjust the automatic lip syncing so that you can get your character's mouths moving exactly the way you want. Let's get on with it shall we? So here we are in Cartoon Animator 5 and I've set up this business bonkers character by Gary Pye. Uh, this character is available free through the marketplace if you want to give this a go yourself. And what I'm going to do is just demonstrate the actual mouth movements and how the lip, auto lip sync and manual lip sync processes work. Going to be a fairly short demonstration. I'm not going to go into it in great detail. It's just enough to get you started and familiar with how lip syncing works. So this is the actual project I set up. Just play it. Amazing! 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 Alright, so I'm not going to show you how to animate all of that. I'm just mainly going to focus on the mouth and the rest of this uh, you could work out yourself. But so what I'm going to do just to get started is to right click on the character and remove all his animation. You'll see now if I play this uh, absolutely nothing is happening, the thing's playing, but nothing is happening with the character. So if you've never lip-synced character before, uh, the easiest way to get your voice or audio file into the program is just by dragging the sound in. So this is my amazing sample here. Uh, Cartoon Animator 5 will take WAV files and MP3 files, so drag that in onto your character. And you see the auto lip syncing is already applied and if you're happy with that you're pretty much done with lip syncing your character to the audio but uh, if you want to go a bit further than that uh, we'll select the character open up the timeline and you'll see the character appears in the timeline here because he's selected and we're going to make sure we're at the start so if you're wondering where the audio can be found in the timeline. We've got all these different buttons here for the businessman's keyframes. The actual audio gets stored under the face track and you'll see we've got voice clip and facial clip here. The audio is in voice clip. You can see the waveforms there and underneath the waveforms we've got these little icons that are called uh, busy me's I think is the pronunciation. And if you double click on any one of these it will bring up the lips editor so I'm just going to double click on this one and this is the lips editor uh, you can also bring this up through the animation menu see it's just here lips editor uh, but it's easy enough just to double click on now all characters generally use this lips editor for the auto lip syncing uh, anyone who's made a character for cartoon animator will have made these mouth shapes and I believe there's actually more in this than you actually make within a character rig there's only something like nine in a character rig that actually gets used and some of these are doubled up but the way it works is if you want to manually adjust what the auto lip sync has done so we can see here uh, the character on the first go through is going to say amazing and if you sort of say amazing yourself and imagine sort of take note of the shape of your mouth uh, you might notice that ah, amazing doesn't actually show a lot of teeth but for some reason he's showing a lot of teeth at the start so maybe we want to change this particular one here so we just select it and go with maybe something like this one here we could go ah here we go. so we go ah M, so M, you shut your mouth a bit. A, open your mouth up a little bit. So just that one change sort of makes that look a little bit better. We could move on to the next one, just see how that looks. You'll notice this one starts with the mouth more open, how you would expect. And for some reason he's going to woo. Amazing. I don't think that mouth shape even makes any sense at that point. 
And maybe we could change that one to maybe that. So we can go to that one. He is getting louder, so it makes sense that that's op his mouth opens more. I don't know why it goes into woo there. We could get rid of that altogether just by hitting the delete key. That's pretty good. If we wanted to add a frame in, we can just go onto the frame and select what we want to put in there. So, thinking maybe the zing part. You see, that just adds a new frame in. So that's pretty good. Maybe we can move on to the next one, see what that's like. Perhaps move this over a bit so he opens his mouth for a little bit longer there. This last one, I'm going to show you a different technique for doing manual lip syncing, and that is using the actual mouth sprites that don't get brought into here. So we go to the last one. We wanted to make his mouth open really wide. We could then use mouth sprites that come with the character. So we open up the sprite editor here, bring that up. You can see the mouth track, face, up the mouth sprites. And you'll see that this character comes with way more sprites than the lips editor has. You'll notice some of these have got the same names as in the lips editor and some of them are completely different, but you can use any of these in your lip syncing using this manual method but I want to warn you that if you're going to use sprites from the sprite editor instead of the lips editor uh, these sprites can get wiped out of the timeline if you then go through and use the face puppet editor now if you're like me I use the face puppet editor to add things like eye blinks and sometimes I use it to turn the head and whatever so if you're going to do that you need to use the face puppet editor first before using this so I'll show you what that looks like first up let's say I want to use some of the mouth sprites from here move the track over a bit so we can so let's say I wanted to make that mouth a lot bigger so we say we go like really big like that and you'll notice what happens here uh, when i use that mouth a keyframe is put in the face motion clip in the sprite track and if i scroll down you'll see it's added a keyframe here in the mouth sprite track this underscore s stands for sprite and there's a keyframe there and this line that continues on from here is telling Cartoon Animator to keep that mouth shape going from here until the end of the animation. So that's why you'll see now if I scrub through this lip sync, none of these other mouth shapes will work. It works before this, but not after that keyframe. It's completely disabled it. So if you want to return control back this track you have to release that keyframe so let's say when he gets to about the M we want to return control back to the auto lip sync so we just go to that frame and click the release button and that tells cartoon animator that this keyframe only needs to be held for these frames and we can stop holding it here and control will go back to the lips editor track and everything's working again. But before we get too deep into that, I'm going to show you how the face puppet editor can wipe this out. So keep in mind, at the beginning of this fourth time that he says amazing, we've made the mouth open really wide and hold open wide. And what I'm going to do is open up the puppet face puppet editor. And you'll see here uh, some of the faces selected. But I'm going to clear everything off there and just do eye movement now I'm going to keep this blend data on next recording open I'm going to go back to the start of the animation and I'm going to record just eye blinks that's all I'm doing 
I'm just going to hit record and hit space to start and I'm just going to click the mouse button every so often to add some eye blinks. So here we go. That's done. You'll notice the mouth didn't move at all while I was using a puppet editor, but uh, all of those mouth movements are still in there. If we close this and play back the animation. And there you go. So all of the automatic lip syncing and any manual changes that we did to the auto lip sync with the lips editor is still all perfectly fine. All of that is completely unaffected by the face puppet editor. But you'll notice down here where we made the mouth open really wide on this frame, even though it's marked in the sprite track that we've done that, uh, down below here, that keyframe has been completely wiped out. And the facial clip in here, you can see we've got all these keyframes in here for when the eyes blink. And so just be aware of that problem. We may need to delete some of these keyframes in the face here in order to continue doing this manual lip sync with the mouse using the sprite editor, but we'll see how we go. We'll open this up, bring it over here, open up the mouth. And we'll put that large open mouth that we had before. And you'll see now that's brought it back. Now I want maybe that to come back a bit. And I think I might give him a better M mouth because that's not particularly great. See what we've got here. Go that one. Um, A, A. Go back into the A track. We'll give him an A mouth like this one. Could try releasing that. I think that's actually pretty good. So that's how you can do further manual lip syncing and make use of the extended mouth sprites that some characters have with them. Uh, we could even go... Even go... And release that. So I hope you found that demonstration useful point was just to quickly show you how the auto lip sync system works and how you can manually modify the mouth shapes if you need to. Just bear in mind that if you're using the second method where you're using the extended mouth sprites from the sprite editor that those can be wiped out from the timeline if you then go on and use the face puppet editor. If you want to use the face puppet editor as part of animating your characters then do that first and then adjust the lip sync of your mouth from the sprite editor with those extended mouth sprites after that. But that's it for this video. Again, hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.